Good morning, guys. It's bright and early. Today's probably, I don't want to say the most stressful, but this is a really big, important day for me. I've waited like 20 something years for this. So I'm on my way to my immigration interview. I've done other meetings, or not really meetings at uh, the USCIS, but like I got my DACA and so I've done like other things, but I've never had like an actual sit down interview that I remember. So yeah, I've been here since I was eight years old and now I am 33. <laughs> so here we are finally having an immigration interview and stayed up pretty late. Last, well, only till midnight last night, uh, getting all my paperwork ready. I made sure everything was done all of this past week. I've been getting it ready. Over the past few years, I've also tried to keep in mind to collect all my papers. I try not to throw any paperwork away, any bills away, because I know that depending on what you're filing, they ask for a lot of evidence that you've been a resident in the United States and all this stuff. So when I applied for my DACA, it was for me personally, and I had to show them my residency for like at least five years. It might've been longer, possibly 10 years. And I don't remember, I'd have to double check on that if you guys are wondering but for this one it's depending on how you're filing in my case they want to see my entire relationship and proof that the marriage is real so pictures bills joint accounts anything so I've put all of that together photocopied everything put two folders of everything original copies copies for them I have all my identification made copies of that his identification made copies of that birth certificates pretty much I was just going over all the different paperwork that I've put together. If you guys were really curious, I could do a separate video going over all the paperwork that I put together. And my relationship's been very long, so it's not like I filed right after my marriage. So that will definitely help my situation. A lot of people file right after they get married. And at that point, they give you a temporary residency. And then after two years of being married, they give you your permanent residency. And I think that one also is another two years and then you can apply for your citizenship and I'm not positive but because I've already been married for two years and then on top of that the paperwork took an extra year for them to receive the paperwork because there was a huge wave of paperwork that came through in Colorado so they had a year delay and so technically I think well let's see it was the beginning of 2014 and now it's towards the end of 2017 so yeah it's been about three years so I think that will work in our benefit so I'm trying not to stress out too much I mean, this has been an interview that I've been looking forward to my entire life practically. So I've tried to put everything together as well as possible, even though we've been married for over three years and we're dating for two years before that. I mean, we've been together for about five years. We still went over sample questions because as well as you think you know each other, there are things that you just don't even think of. Like, I don't even know. It's just things that it's like you live together, you know each other, but it's like, I don't know, little details that you don't think to really know or dates or um, I'm really bad with dates but in some of the sample questions they went over like birthdays of family members and I barely even remember my own parents birthdays so I'm really really bad with dates but to them I don't think it matters that you have a bad memory they want to know that both of you know details about each other's lives hopefully they kind of take it a little bit easier on us I'm not sure if they're gonna separate us usually especially with newer relationships I've heard that they separate the couple I'm into separate rooms to see if the answers match but because we've been married for a while I'm really hoping that they just leave us in the same room not that it really matters but it would really help me not be as nervous but no matter what happens I know it's gonna be fine even on the worst case scenario which we will not speak of that right now it would still be okay it's not the end of the world but worst case scenario won't happen because there's no reason for it to happen like I said I've been here for so long and <laughs> and the funny part is that actually Actually, half my family are already citizens. I'm just the last straggler getting my residency. So I just, like I mentioned in a previous vlog, I just happen to fall out of every single category. I was either too old or I was too young or I was, I just never was able to fall into any category to be able to apply for my residency or citizenship on my own until eventually I got married. I wanted to do it right and here we are. So I think we're almost there.
there were going to the Denver, Colorado USCIS immigration office. I'm pretty sure it's the one that I went to last time when I had a question about a letter that they sent me back for, I don't know if it was for these papers or for my DACA, but I'm pretty sure it's the same location. I won't be able to bring you guys in there with me because they don't even allow you to be on your phone while you're in the waiting room. And when they say that, they mean it. I went to a biometrics appointment, I think it was about a year ago, and these roads are so bad. <laughs> Sorry, you guys are all over the place. But my biometrics appointment, that's where they take your picture, take your full fingerprints, your hand, or handprint, I guess, run background checks, all those things. And they do, yeah, the pictures for your ID cards. And in the waiting room, they also have signs all over the room saying, don't use your phone. And some people, they might not speak English, but there was a lady that was in there that I remember her talking like she didn't speak very good English. So not that that really matters, but she was using her phone. So maybe she couldn't read the sign, but there's always a security person there. And the security person asked her to put her phone away. And within like 15 minutes, she pulled out her phone again and started texting. And he went off. He started not yelling, but like, very sternly telling her that if she used her phone again, she would be kicked out of the room and she would not be able to follow her biometrics and her paperwork would be taken away. And that is a very big deal. You can just not use your phone for an hour or two hours, but if you lose your ability to follow your paperwork, that's forever. So, I mean, or for a very, very long time, you just do not want to mess with that. So I couldn't believe that. I don't know, some people just don't listen very well or don't want to follow direction very well or at all, I don't know. So you definitely want to listen to what they say and do exactly as they say. Also, when they ask you questions at like interviews and things like that, don't offer more information than they ask you for because you can sit there and ramble on forever, but you might end up putting your foot in your mouth <laughs> and you might end up messing up information for some reason. So you just want to answer their questions, leave it simple, leave it quick. You want to be able to be in and out of there. It should be done quickly. They say that interviews are usually about 30 minutes if they go well you know so fingers crossed that ours is 30 minutes and we're in and out of there and it's easy peasy so i've been kind of self-conscious about like underneath my nose because if you guys have been watching my vlogs i had some surgery on my nose and i vlogged the entire recovery process uh before after surgery and the stitches are still there so they look like little white pieces coming out of the bottom of my nose and I've tried to trim them but they're still kind of there so I've put makeup and like packed it on top of it not packed it but like just dabbed it on just hoping that it's not gonna be noticeable not that they would care I mean they wouldn't care but it looks like I have crustiness underneath my nose so it's like almost embarrassing I think that's the main thing if I'd known that my interview was gonna be scheduled so close to my surgery I would have not scheduled my surgery when I did I would have had it after <laughs> probably later on in the year but I wasn't sure and since it was so delayed I was like well they're probably not even gonna get back to me until I don't know when so I'll just do my own thing but luckily my bruises have gone away swelling is mostly gone and most of it is pretty healed up so I'm looking a lot more normal I'm not as stressed out as I would have thought I was I already did my freaking out the past few days while I was getting everything ready and I did my temper tantrums and panic attacks and whatever else you can think of definitely had a little bit of a meltdown I think it was either probably two days ago I just started to get really stressed out and I definitely had a bit of a meltdown but you know what today's the day and I finally decided that whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen and I've done everything I can to prepare and there's nothing else I can do and now it's pretty much in God's hands so I'm just gonna hope fingers crossed that I have someone that's in a very good mood that's very nice because it's always kind of scary and intimidating if you have someone that's it's not very nice, but I've had good experiences. The past time that I went to USCIS, there was a very nice gentleman that helped me with my question. And so fingers crossed, someone that's equally positive and, and is, you know, having a great day. So just putting that out there and we're gonna be there any minute. So I will see you guys after and I will let you know how it went and what they went over. 